previously on Guardians of Fahal. You adventurers had made your way down from the Pale Mountains on a riverboat, transferring some ore to the Merchant Guild Hall in the city of Fayan. You had arrived in evening time and were treated to a meal, only to have it interrupted with the Guildmaster's daughter, Sarah, bursting in and saying her little brother had been abducted by fairies. Being the heroes that you are, you charged into the forest, found the boy deep in the woods who had been abducted by darklings or some sort of dark fey creatures, and an evil hag that had some foul purpose in mind for him. You managed to kill the hag and kill the darklings, save the boy, and return him to his father at the guild hall, who invited you to stay the night and asked to meet with you the next day. When you awoke the next morning in the guild hall, you were treated to breakfast and kindly by the staff there, and one of the local workers of the guild, Una, you met, a human woman who's been there for a while, offered to give you a tour of the city, which you took her up on. You did some shopping, you bought some potions, you went inside the city walls, and then you split apart where the twin brothers Hans and Franz decided to go to a house of ill repute called the Rabbit Hole, hoping to find some connection to their tribe and the goddesses they worship. And uh, Nora and Rowan, the half-elf druid, and her adopted tree brother decided to go to the zoo with Una and see all the interesting exhibits in this magical town. Um, towards the end of the day, as you were heading back, Hans and Franz ran into a bookshop, bought some books, and then made their way back to the guild hall outside the city by racing, only to get stopped by some law enforcement, and who warned them not to race in the city. They asked some questions about an area of town they heard whispers of named the Shades, very curious about the criminal activity and the strain and the poverty of the people there, and told the man that they would do their best to fight it and race back to the guild hall. So now you all find yourselves, it is late afternoon when you made it back and the evening is yours. The guild master is about to be in soon. Um, the steward of the guild hall will say, oh yes, um, thank you for coming back. Uh, you can go in there. There's some of your other companions you've traveled with here uh, waiting for you as well. So please, please go in, go in. Okay. Thank you. Um, as you guys walk into the room, you see some of the other people that were on the boat with you who ran into the forest. You see Felix, uh, the human male who had a very Scottish accent that I can't do. Um, you see the half elf ranger with her wolf wrapped up around her, like by her feet, sitting there, and the strange water genasi who spoke like a pirate named Shore. And they, they say hello as well. Alan and still loves him so much. <laughs> Dear listeners, these were people in the initial one shot who are not here tonight or in the long campaign, but I wanted to give them a mention, so. All right, so you go in there and are kind of sitting down, waiting. Hans and Franz will be reading that the um, the enchantment book sure. that he purchased. Okay. Um, and Hans and Franz will be reading uh, the third book that he purchased. Okay. Uh, Nora will be sitting at one of the tables, probably next to Rowan, and she will have her her study book that she carries around with mm -hmm. her out, um, mostly basically going over um, all of the things that they saw at the zoo and just doodling them next to the appropriate mm -hmm. pages. You guys are actually like all in like a more private room, so probably like okay. a few hundred feet across or so, and it has um, like a big table. A few hundred feet across? Like how? It's like a stadium? Maybe like no, a basketball court? No, like, how big is our, how big would you say our, our floor? This area here? Like this yeah. area is like, like 20, 20 by 30? Maybe? Oh, sorry, I'm bad. <laughs> a few hundred? So no, no, no. At most. <laughs> at most, 70. 70. <laughs> 70. <laughs> it's a big dining room. Anyway, we're going to pretend I got that right. Um, fix it in post. Yeah, we'll fix it in post. <laughs> so no, yes. We're doing it live. But you have to have somebody else do the voiceover, like... Uh, the room's like 400, I mean, 40 <laughs> feet, uh, 30 feet. As I'm editing it, I'll just do a voiceover. 30 feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but like there, you guys are all kind of sitting around, just waiting for a few minutes or so. And then uh, finally, you do recognize the man walk in. Um, you briefly met him this morning when you 
got back from the forest with his son. He's a middle-aged man. He's kind of got a little bit of like a, a portly stomach, but he looks very friendly, very like jovial. He's dressed super fine. He's wearing um, super fine, super fine, super fine. He's mm. he's hot, like no. <laughs> oh, um, but in a respectable way. Respectable way. He looks about like he's probably in his forties. What was his name? Uh, Guildmaster Williams or Robert Williams. Um, but he, he... Bobby Billy. <laughs> Bobby Billy. Bobby, Bobby Billy. Bobby Billy. Billy. This is, this is Redneck cousin. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, he, he comes in kind of like, oh, my friends, thank you so much for for coming. I I know that this isn't enough to repay you, but I hope it's a start. Uh, servants! Servants, come! Come! And uh, there's some servants oh, in the guild. Are you giving us servants? <laughs> there's... I guess we'll just have to set them free. There's there's some servants uh, who are kind of wearing like similar style like gray dresses and like gray shirts and stuff who come in and um, are carrying neutral. food. Yeah, like they, they kind of looks like a uniform, but not like really like our conception of like a super detailed uniform. They just all are kind of wearing the same neutral gray color to show that they work here and like what their rank is. Okay. So they bring in food. They're bringing in in lots of roasted food potatoes, some sort of roasted vegetables. There's some fruits as desserts. And then there's some very nicely roasted chicken in there. So like the food is very, very good. Do any of the serving ladies appear to be dressed a lot nicer than the others? Like maybe a favored. Make, a, per- a, make a perception check. I just want to use my passive. <laughs> what is your passive? 10. Not, not particularly favored. There is one that kind of occasionally like looks over at him a little bit, like she's trying to make eye contact, but with, he's not really paying attention to her. Um, that's about what you notice. Okay, I'll make note of her. Okay. Um, speaking of the of the servants, do they do they look like they're well treated? Oh yeah, they look like they're pretty well treated okay. and paid well. Like they don't look underfed or anything, and they seem pretty happy for the most part. Okay. You know, as happy as you can be, like when you're on a job and you're carrying a so these plate of like, chicken. Um, like. Oh, uh, that sounds like a great job. <laughs> <laughs> like biblical servants. Where no, 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 no. It's more they like were employees. Down yes, they're employees. <laughs> they work here. Okay. Oh. They're not like slaves. Not slaves. They're servants. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. No, um, no, no, they're employed here. While everyone is eating, Rowan will lean over to Nora. I do not require this food. Um, would you like me to store it in my chest for later? I don't, I don't think that's... Do you understand like how food preservation works? It's... It won't work. It's not oh. gonna work. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. Good try, though. Okay. <laughs> do you like mice? That's how you get you mice. Like, I, I do like mice. The mice are very cute. Well, them. I guess you could start in your belly, then. <laughs> No, Give it two no, days, you'll no, have a lot of mice. No, Rowan no, thinks for a bit. No. And then agrees not to. <laughs> okay. Um, as you guys are kind of sitting around and talking, you can see that like the guild master is, you know, talking to servants, kind of giving them like instructions and like just giving them directions of like what to bring next, what to move out of the way. Um, he's also like chatting a bit with you guys lightly and everything and then there's like wine and some ale that comes in and stuff. This is a very nice meal. This is probably the nicest meal any of you have ever eaten. <laughs> that's a high bar. Yeah, that's quite the claim. <laughs> okay, not the hi- not the nicest meal that like Andrew and Josh have ever eaten, but the nicest meal that Hans and Franz have ever eaten. That's a high claim. It yeah. is. Are you going to gourmet restaurants when you're out in the mountains? Uh, no, we are very good at cooking. While in the field. I'm not uh, that. No. <laughs> and sure. Brother, sure, why? <laughs> sure you are, Jan. <laughs> no, I'm what just thinking, like, like, you know, uh-huh. tribal feasts probably were pretty amazing. But Yeah, this, though, the food here is different because there's different spices in it than what you're used oh, to. Sure. Like, there's new spices because it's a trade guild, so they right. get all Imports. the stuff. Yeah. This, this, this might help. I'm assuming that um, this... This food is more high class and fancy and mm-hmm. and very like like overproduced almost. Mm-hmm. Whereas the the feasts were very 
just like earthy and, and well, they were, yeah. yeah they and were special it's like take a week to prepare this stuff right right so like this, it's a different what level we're used of to. Yes. the best. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's not your favorite. Like, I'm sure there's some home food from your village that you're sentimental for, but it's mm. it, this is more of, like, a fine dining so experience. So what kind of seasonings are they using? Um, <laughs> your character wouldn't quite know, but there's something in the potatoes that just has, like, more of, like, a, a kick to it than what you're used to. Like, there's almost, like, a spicy... Brother, it's poison! <laughs> Oh no no it's it's not the poison it's um it's the what spices. do you mean it's not the poison no it's not the poison. <laughs> so it's not poison. this poison that will make sure to eat that one no, <laughs> no it's the spices is it, they're I from assure the, you they're you from can't the... taste the poison is it is it mine is mine poison no my dear boy man my dear friend it is not poisoned it is a uh, a spice from the south okay <laughs> how far south. Oh, goodness, I would say, hmm, probably... Of <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Andrew! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear <laughs> You just shut up and eat a cookie. <laughs> oh. Oh. I couldn't give the exact details of the miles, but I would say I know there's quite things... I believe this is in Elios's fields, yes, or or even the Dragon's Claw has some spice like this. Do any of us know anything about that? Roll a history check. Uh, uh, my Franz have heard of Elios. That? Yes. But a place called Elios Fields. Yeah, that's a that's a good old six. Fifteen. Would we would we have something in passing from like because we've heard of Elios? Yeah. Roll roll a history check. Even if not proficient. Yep. Okay. Dang it. Eleven. Okay. You don't know? You're assuming it's a region in the south? Sam, because you're a bookworm and you would read books in your hometown, um, there's some some sparse details, but you know roughly what the map looks like. You've seen a map of the continent before. And you think that there is a region of the what is known as the Meyer Empire that is called Elios' Fields. And it has a lot of agricultural output there. So you would know that. The rest of you have no idea. Okay. okay. Um, but yeah, he's he's basically said it was a spice from down south. Is that good old southern cooking? A good old southern cooking. Deep <laughs> south? It's more of mid mid south. So like Tennessee? Yeah. yeah. So like central? Mm. No, not central. Okay. Anyway. Anywho. So the amount we spent 20 minutes talking about the chicken and potatoes. Uh, um, the meal kind of like goes on and he's very friendly, very charismatic person. You kind of see this like, you feel like he could talk you into a lot of stuff if you didn't know oh. <laughs> He's a salesman. Oh. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be talked into something by him, I certainly can, try. But you can try no, and talk me into something. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, he's into tacos, not hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Inappropriate. Maybe he just hasn't met the right hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're just getting into the romance early in this campaign. All right. Ooh, you think that's romance? <laughs> <laughs> where, where does the romance come into that? I'm not really sure what's going on. Uh, <laughs> Hello, his name is Andrew Saylor. My name is Josh Lester. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, as you guys continue on with Neil, um, eventually he kind of grows a little bit more serious, and he said, "Yes." I would like to discuss something with him. Sure. Well, you can do that. Okay. Um, you know, like while he's out talking or whatever, um, Hans and Franz will will approach him, and uh, what was his name again? Uh, Sir William. Bobby Billy. Um, uh, Robert, Robert, Sir Williams. Robert Williams. Yeah, Sir Williams would probably be what you've heard him called to before. Not his first name. Excuse me. So, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sir William. Yes. yes. I wonder if I could have a moment of your time. Oh, of, of course, of course. My brother and I, we were in the city just a bit ago. We talked to an officer, Brian Hughes. 
he had made mention of a thieves guild in the, what was the name of the shades. the shades in the shades he said there were a bit of a thorn in his side thorn in his side there a thorn in my side the so in your side as well perfect <laughs> would you be able to tell me where the head where the headquarters are I would like to take them down he like laughs kind of thinking you're joking and then he reads your body language and says are serious he's like oh well I will not doubt your gallantry but if I knew where they were I could guarantee you they would not still be there I would have the law enforcement there in a heartbeat oh they're very good at hiding the little rats that they are the venerable they call themselves do you have any clues that I could follow up on maybe uh, not particularly. I have been, I would assume, talking to your, uh, who would you say the, the, the guard was you talked to? He, his name was Brian Hughes. Brian Hughes, Brian Hughes. Oh, oh yes, I, I think I've met him before. He's a half-elf, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, he's pretty, he's pretty new to that post so far, but yes, he's, he's, his part of the city is investigating it. <sighs> Until then, I'll just trust a little bit in my own workers and their security force to keep our stock safe from those thieves. If you have any jobs you want us to do, such as guarding your stuff, my brother and I would more than gladly step in to give us a reason mm -hmm. to meet these venerable. Mm -hmm. Are you talking to him about this at the table, or did you pull him aside? No, I like, pulled him aside. Okay, uh, okay. He's like, I think I'll be able to take you up on that, but let us return to the table real quick, and then we'll talk more about this. Well, that's good, because we didn't leave the table. I just said... Oh, no, I thought you said you I, pulled him aside, like, out of the room. No, there's no reason okay. for you to pull him okay. aside. Okay, all right, then he's like, we'll discuss this with the table, actually. Yeah, it's like, it we got to... our tray of food. Um, it's like, hey, yo, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, during, during, after you finish talking, he, he turns to all of you and says, my friends... I haven't known you long at all, but for rescue and my boy, you have my eternal gratitude. Now, I am rather good with words. That's how I am in this position. However, their words fail me. There is not enough ways to describe how grateful I am to all of you, for strangers, for running into the woods and rescuing a child that you didn't know and didn't have to save. In my line of work as a businessman, I can buy many things but I cannot buy integrity no matter how hard I try to purchase it. You've all proven yourself to be trustworthy and noble people, and I would like to give you a reward for your services. So without any more questions, you can walk away from here tonight with a hundred gold for each of you for rescuing my boy. However, I'd like to give you an opportunity to work here with me. There's always missions, it's freelance work. You can come and go as you please. We do appreciate some notice, but you can take jobs. You can travel around the country, transporting goods, guarding things, seeing new places. It's a good opportunity and you can make a lot of money doing it. And then you would of course have access to the facilities of the guild. You could stay here, you can have meals here, you can do some research here. We don't have a massive library, but we are working on our own collection of things. Well, that's extremely generous of you. Not as generous as you acted last night, my dear. She just kind of blushes and <laughs> sinks down. <laughs> gets quiet. So 100 gold piece, that's mm -hmm. great. Do we get that no. as well? Yes, you, keep you still keep that. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, Rowan That's gives, a reward. He just Rowan, he wanted to give you all job opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Hans and Franz here would, um, he would ask about like um, uh, uh, work up in the mountains um, in the mountains. Um, Just for special effect. Uh, <laughs> it added so much. Um, well, as far as what I think we've heard is some of the, that which we are seeking is in the mountains, Yes, right? you are yeah. correct. You've heard that yeah. there's some stuff in the mountains. Um, so so he would be like, um, Mr. Williams, mm -hmm. um, we appreciate the offer, um, and uh, we would be interested in using the resources that the Merchant's Guild has um, alongside our own interests. 
Do you have any any work up in the mountains to the west? In the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm not in charge of scheduling, but I do know that jobs in the mountains are fairly frequent. You have precious minerals, you have salt coming through, you have lumber. It's a matter of which one you want, but... Um, and, and like I said, you can work here and do jobs and then go off for a while. We have some people who go off and decide to follow a shipment down or up north and then stay in a town over winter and then come back in the spring and do work. It's it's fairly open. We just appreciate some notice if you're planning on staying longer. But, you know, with, with the sending system, that's not impossible or infeasible, especially for what we pay our employees. Speaking, the- <laughs> speaking of that, um, if you don't mind me asking, uh, how much is the average pay for jobs like that? Oh, it depends on the danger in the job. Um, we have a job tonight, um, which if all of you are interested, even in not working full time, I would appreciate some help with. Moni, most of our adventurers are on another job transporting some goods to the library. Um, we would have a job watching a shipment tonight in our own cellar before it is picked up early this morning suspect the thieves are going to try to get in tonight and steal it, but we'd appreciate some guards on it. Wait, in your cellar? They're going to break in and steal from your cellar? They could try. Brother, they are thieves. (laughs) This is what I do. Wait, isn't this kind of what you guys wanted to do? Yeah. You guys wanted to track down the thieves, you were saying. I mean, if they come to us. Yeah, okay. Sure. Well, I can promise you that there are hazards on the road, Siren. Most shipments. Uh, if you've traveled the mountains, you know there's natural <laughs> phenomenons. <laughs> there's creatures. There's all sorts of monsters in that sort of way. But we also find that the the venerable themselves enjoy trying to get their hands on anything, even if it's local. They've been unsuccessful so far, but we prefer to have guards on our merchandise to and from the location. What sort of merchandise is it? Oh, it's wine shipments. Okay. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) No, I swear. These bottles were broken when we got here. (laughs) I promise they were empty. (laughs) It's it's wine from the uh, the Fey Realm that is going down south towards Crown's Point. (laughs) Well? So what sort of facilities... Who do we have access to? I know my brother really enjoys smithing. Would he have access to that here? Oh, yes, we have a smith on stand who does some minor repairs for armor and stuff like that, and also looks over shipments coming in to make sure it's not damaged. We have um, somebody who helps identify potions and make sure that they are, in fact, the real ingredients. We have a small library. <clears throat> we have somebody who is an arcanist who actually attended the university and identifies magical items for us. We have all sorts of things here. Um, Mr. Williams, I think you misunderstand. It's not that I would utilize your, your, your smith mm-hmm. to make something for me. I would be using the smithy to make something myself. Oh, well, I th- I believe that could be arranged, um, if... Hang on, I gotta look up the NPC's name. Hold on a minute. Robert Smith. <laughs> we already have a Robert. James Smith. <laughs> there could be more than one Robert. <laughs> Robert's a common name. Juan. Juan? Yes. How do you spell that? W-Y-O-N. Um, no, he's, he's a fine man. If he has a problem with it, I'm sure you can talk it out. But he it shouldn't be an issue. You can use the Smith here. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm assuming that uh, you are going to say yes. And um, your three companions that you traveled with before, um, they all kind of like think about it and they give various reasons for saying, no, I'm leaving town. I got other obligations. I'm leaving town. I've got to sh- wash my wolf that night. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but they but they thank him and stuff. And, you know, he just kind of then, you know, he's very nice and everything and he has he motions one of the servants over and like you know mentions like has them go get the gold reward for everyone and then um, but then he turns his attention back to you guys and he's like well um, any other questions it sounds like you're interested is is the hunt master here 
Is the who? Is there a hunt master here? A hunt master. Um, you know, some sort of like ranger type. Um. Yeah, not Una. <laughs> Somebody that I mean, Hans and Franz wants to talk to him about animals in the area. Um, we don't. Well, we don't actually have one on staffs per se, but we do have a man. Uh, Tristan comes in. He actually keeps in. He he organizes and manages the fur trade, and oh. he talks with all the hunters and trappers in the area. So uh, he's not in today, but he he comes in pretty frequently. You probably could find him soon and speak to him. You you want to look for animals in the region? You said something like that. Yes. Oh oh yes. Um, well if you want, there's always some of the local bars in town have are known for hunters and everything so you could just go there as well but tristan tristan will probably be in a day or two or so i can he comes in frequently um rowan takes the the i assume it's a sack of, of gold, gold yes. for the reward it uh, is a sack and sort of presents it to nora to to give to her and uh kind of looking with a a, a questioning sort of like, like what waiting to do for with a this? response um turns back to to mr williams and says i i think we would be very interested in in taking on this this freelance work you called it yes yes definitely but wonderful I, wonderful and he turns back to nora and says I, I i think it would be rather helpful for mama and papa it would be mm-hmm. yes we would be very interested of course of course but, Wonderful, and and you two are interested as well. It sounds yes, perfect. Yeah. Well then, if we grab one of oh, them. I do have one question though before I do we questions. go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, we'll go in order. Uh, Sam, your question. Um, so and she's speaking to the guild master right now. Yes. Um, do, do you know whether or not is it in your guild or maybe somewhere else in town where maybe there's like a cleric or temples of some sort? Oh, if you want a uh, temple, my dear, you just have to go to the the Suns District. Oh. Okay. Um, did you have a tour guide today? Yeah. Uh, maybe you could have them take you there. Um, there's there's so many gods you can throw a rock and hit one of their followers. Basically, don't tell them I said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nora, are you looking for a particular god? Mm, not necessarily. I'm just looking for something. Well, you don't want to bother with the Temple of Al. They don't know anything. No, oh. they don't even know who the fo- who their god is. <laughs> oh, that sounds really unfortunate. <laughs> what are you looking for? Um, I mean, I never really found it before, so it's not really. I, I'm just kind of. I'm exploring. <laughs> yeah, but, but what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for somebody who's really knowledgeable about, you know, like, um, just life in general and, and things after death. I know that sounds really morbid. Well, I mean, we know a lot about things after death. Well, I can talk to you guys about it later, maybe. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Um, he's kind of been talking to his servants and stuff during this time. She still wants to go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's called the, uh, he called it the Sun's Way District. Uh, the Sun's Way. Like, way. The Sun in the, the Sky. Sun's way? Yes. District. I was say it was a bit Jesus. Got it. Was the Sun's Way. No, no, no. <laughs> the Sun as in the bright and beautiful Sun. That shiny thing in the sky. The shiny thing in the sky. If you know, the fe- if you know that it's beautiful, you've been staring at it too long. <laughs> I can appreciate it. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, now, if you're interested then, and you've all said yes, there is a little bit of paperwork. We do have some records we like to keep on file just for knowing who you are. There is a minor contract. It's not a big deal. It's just to promise that you're not going to do illegal activities and such. Formalities, formalities. Um, I can pass you along to, uh, the one in charge of it, and he can answer all your questions. Uh, ponder! Ponder! Ben, go get Ponder for me. Uh, yes, Guildmaster. And uh, Ben, who you guys have met earlier, is the steward, kind of goes and like runs out of the room. And he uh, comes back like five minutes later with... Uh, the best way I can describe him is 
He's 20, but he looks like his soul's been dead for 20 years oh. at the same time. <laughs> so he's a lawyer. <laughs> so you say he's a lawyer um, or he's like one of the is it like lawyer dead or like working at a fast food joint dead like working at the DMV dead oh <laughs> yep okay. um yep yes one of the fronts goes over and lays hands on him <laughs> I'm um, sorry, my brother. You must hurt your soul. He's, he's kind of like, he's like this pale looking thin guy who looks a little like he's got freckles and he's got tired circles under his eye. He's kind of got like sandy blonde hair and he just looks a little bit like he likes everything neat and he has a job that just makes him a little dead inside. But you know, he's, that's his. Does he look human? Yeah, he's human. human. Is he a necromancer? No. If he looks dead inside. Don't figure out my villain before we've even started, guys. I'm roll a perception check. <laughs> wow. That's a 15. <laughs> is, is, he he, is he the big big bad evil guy? Yes. Yes, he is. You should kill Bro, him now. you should kill him now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. no. Chop that tree down. <laughs> you gotta nip it in the bud. Uh, <laughs> he comes in and he's like, Yes, yes, Guildmaster Williams. It, it is my evening off. Oh, you can take five minutes oh. and get these people all signed up. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and he kind of looks at him. He's like, "You really think it takes? It takes me five minutes? You know what? Whatever. Yes, come, come with me. I'll get you signed up." And he just kind of like you know, motions and stuff. Uh, so Lizzie, yes, I would like to get a copy of this myself. Oh, you will, you will. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wrote it up. And so, so he, this guy is, he's mm-hmm. like the the lawyer or, or whatever you, the, like the, the He's the bookkeeper, basically. Bookkeeper. Um, so he's like, well, I have a few questions I need to ask you. And um, there's a few general things we like to have on record. Um, Rowan looks at him and says, I also have a question for you. I cast, div- I, I use my divine sense. <laughs> okay. What are you sensing? He's he's human. He's just dead inside. <laughs> I don't, so I don't sense any undead. No, he's he's human. You don't have to sense. He's just actually dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't understand. <laughs> I just need Rowan to know why. <laughs> uh, Do I catch anything off these two? Um, you get like a touch of like what is it? What is it? Sense? Fey, fiend, mm-hmm. undead, celestial, See? celestial. Um, they both have a bit of a fey touch to them. Fey touched. Don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, are, what race are you? Half elf. Half elf. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But I'm a tree. The, but the tree man. That also makes sense. He's going to bring, bring a tree up. I'm a life. magical tree. Yeah. I'm a real boy. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, because of the way. His nose hasn't grown. Percepting. He must be telling the truth. Because of the way that he looks like he hates everything in the entire world, um, Nora goes ahead and Druid crafts him a little flower and hands it over and just like, I'm sorry that we're making you do work on your day off. Please don't hate us. He kind of actually looks a little bit like moved tight. He moved, he's moved a little bit by it. He's like, you see a tear oh, roll uh, down his cheek. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It, it, it'll go quickly if you just answer. She'll just, she'll just take the flower, put it on there soul. and just kind of. Yeah. He has like yeah, he's sitting at a desk now. Um Well before you get to your questions, Rowan uh-huh. had a question for him. Yes. Um Guildmaster Williams. Oh, is it before you leave the room? No no no. Because no, no. Ponder, no, Ponder I'm asking Ponder. Oh, Ponder, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um Guildmaster Williams mentioned something about a a sending system. Yes, oh. I was also curious about this. Um oh. what what is that? Oh it's um it's a magical service in town. You can pay to have your letter basically sent faster so you don't have to wait by horse. It's a little expensive, but you can have a letter sent to another location with a, another magic circle to receive the letter. I'm not 100% sure on the details of how it works, but that's roughly what it does. Based so it's, on that information, would we know that our home has one of those? or You would know your town does not have one okay. of them. It's, Brother, I know what this is. It's like what the nightingale would do with the hunting parties to call them back. It was a prayer. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let this be our prayer. So Ponder takes you guys to through the guild hall a little bit. You guys have mostly been only in the open food area and the the bunk 
rooms. But then he takes you to like a small little cramped office. There's just books and tons of paper overflowing from the desk. And he uh, sits down at it and starts like digging through his files. Like, ah, oh, where's blank ones, blank ones. Uh, oh, all right. Um, okay, who wants to start? What? We will go. Okay. Um, your name? Anders and Franz. <laughs> which one of you is which? I am Hans and Franz. I am also Hans and Franz. We are brothers. Now we are Hans and Franz. Your your parents both named you Hans and Franz. Our but parents called us Hans and Franz. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, any surname? Sons of Genevieve. It's not uncommon. Sure. <laughs> um, your hometown. Where do you hail from? He's basically writing everything you say down. <coughs> oh boy! I wrote the name of your village in the the note handout I gave you, like the Winter Village. Right. Yeah, we have more to say for from the air, yeah, that area. the tribe of Bendaya. Yeah. You know, tri- we are from the tribal lands of the Bendaya. Could you give me an idea of where that that is? Uh, which region? Southwest of here. Which do on you know? On the west side of the mountains. The west side uh, in east in of Ross- the Iron Valley. East. Oh, okay, east of the Iron Valley. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, he's kind of like just writing everything down quickly. Um, all right. Any food allergies? No. Okay. What? <laughs> Some people have allergies. We like to keep note of this for. Records. It's almost like some food is poison to people. Th- there yes. are foods that will poison people, so I'd imagine that I'm allergic to them as well. Well, I feel like you know what? Never mind. <laughs> yeah, all right, so no f- allergies to speak of. Um, next, any next of kin you want notified? If no. Can, <clears throat> well, can I finish I reading mean, the sentence? Should we notify mom? For you, brother, yes. Our For ne- me, no. <laughs> so if Hans and Franz is killed, maimed, or seriously injured, you want your mother notified? Who is it? What's your mother's name? Genevieve. Genevieve of the Ben... The ben of Dye. the Ben yes, all right, all right. And I would like Hans and Franz, my brother, notified. Don't worry, He's I'll like, be there. He kind of like <laughs> frustratingly like pulls out a second like piece of paper and starts like cross writing the notes and stuff because a lot of this is the same information but some of it's Who different. Are you um, okay. Um, I'm I'm terribly sorry to ask this question, but you both do look very much alike. Um, how how is somebody supposed to tell you apart if 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 both of you died? Who would I notify? Would I notify your mother that both of you died or, or injured or something? What do you mean? <laughs> well, you look alike, so you. Yeah, but he wears the cloak and the boots. And I He's got the shield hair. His his left eye is blue. Blue. <laughs> oh, green. thank you, thank you. And he just eagerly like writes it down. And doesn't want to pursue the subject anymore. Okay, preferred religious treatment in case of illness. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be returned to the land of the Vendaya. You want to go all the way back to the Vendaya if you're sick? Oh. If I'm saying in town, ta- if you're on a mission and we do not and you're- get sick, we have magic for that. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah. I don't have to. <laughs> Certainly not going to the Temple of All. Uh, preferred burial practices or a specific honor in disposing of your remains in the unlikely case of death. Amongst our people, we are burned, and then our ashes are usually scattered. Some are beautiful. Or, in the case of my brother, as a follower of the bee, he would be used in the forge. He just looks really bewildered at that answer, but then it kind of, um, his bureaucratic brain, like, overrides the the questions, and he just is like, nope, I heard an answer, and it was Pyre, and I'm writing down Pyre. Very economical, and, um, yes, that, that is it for you. We'll come back to, uh, the the agreement in a moment. I'll I'll get you out really quickly. Uh, same okay. same things. Um, you you miss. Um, yeah. Name. Uh, Noirin Noirin Fail. Noirin Noirin Failin Failif. 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 Uh, hometown. Um, 
Well, I'm, I'm from the Cater Forest. Uh, what's the nearest town to you, big town? Um, Since I didn't write it down, any town, I'll just say uh, White Tree is a bigger town near you guys. Okay, okay White Tree, okay. White Tree, all right. Um, food allergies? Um, I don't have any, and he doesn't eat. Oh, very, very economical. <laughs> so then you have no idea if he's allergic to anything. Um, he's just ignoring you because he wants to wrap this up. He's like, uh, next of kin no, to notify oh, if oh, injured, uh, maimed, killed. I want you to know it doesn't very often happen, but we have to have it down on record just in case. Um, I have her parents' names in here. Somewhere. It's Lyra and La- I don't... Lyra I, and... What was her dad's name? It's not in here. Papa. Hang on a minute. Papa. I've, I've got a sheet with all your guys' characters' family name. Callum. Callum. Callum's your father's name. Yep. Callum. Layla and Callum. Yep. Yeah. Layla and Callum. All right. Um, any preferred religious treatment in cause of in case of illness? Um, not in particular, no. All right. Preferred burial practices in case the worst happens. Oh. Um. Well, pre- preferably we'd like to go back to our hometown for that. White tree. But- but if if not possible, um, buried mm-hmm. under under like a flower field. Okay, all right, all right. I'll make note, make note, make note. All right, perfect. All right, um, now we just have everyone um, follow uh, sign this contract. What about Rowan? Oh yes, sorry, Rowan. Um, Hello. Name. <laughs> My name is Rowan. Surname. Bailey. 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 He kind of looks for a moment oddly, but then he's like, nope, it's my <laughs> evening off. Do you need to know how to spell that? Nope. Okay. Because I'm not actually taking notes. Okay. It's just he's writing the notes down. <gasps> Sounds like the why. <laughs> uh, hometown. It, uh, the rest is all the same as me. Oh, oh, perfect, perfect. Just give me one moment to transfer that over. And he just starts like writing furiously. Um. And basically, he's like, all right, all right, contract, contract time. All right. Do trees get sick? He has gotten sick before. Yeah, you know, we actually had a lot of trees die on the on the, on the the high slope above Oh, the... it's never been that bad. Actually, yeah, actually as a as a warforged, I am uh, immune to disease. I feel like it would be a... As an arbor forged, you might not be as <laughs> I, I, I feel like it would be a um, moss started growing on you and it just got really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Start growing hair out of my chest. <laughs> I think, I, I think uh, uh, board Arbor Forged puberty would probably be something like, yes, I believe my voice would change like this. <laughs> you, got, you got your first oh, nuts? Yeah, you, 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 you got your first nuts? <laughs> acorns. <laughs> yep. Just a couple of acorns. I'm a knots in the wood, but okay. I, I, have, I have a few, but they have not uh, produce anything yet. Uh, well, uh, let's keep it that way, buddy. <laughs> Use protection. Uh, um, don't be a fool. Wrap your tools. <laughs> um, okay, and he starts wrapping his axe. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, old travelers, and well met. Thank you for listening to our podcast. This is a totally new experience for all of us, and we're glad that you're here with us. Our story lives in many places, but all of them lead back to Patreon. For non-patrons, we will release half episodes of our sessions once every two weeks, and those episodes will be available on Patreon, YouTube, and wherever you find podcasts. Full episodes are also released every two weeks, but for Patreon users only. So if you hate waiting, consider subscribing. If you like the show, consider sharing it on Twitter using hashtag TheWesterverse. You can also follow us all over other social media accounts named TheWesterverse for updates and other RPG-related content. That about wraps it up for our shameless plugs. Now, onward, adventurers! data and then he says um all right we have a standard contract and he hands one to each of you and there's a couple um 
spots where it looks like you can fill in the blanks, but basically it says, I do swear under the laws of the Meyer Empire and the god, insert name of appropriate deity here, <laughs> and the city of Feyen, that I will not steal, smuggle, cheat, or rob from the guild and its associate merchant's property, i.e. vehicles, agriculture, <laughs> merchandise, or any other types of goods or services, I promise to maintain a trustworthy image and work within the legal systems of the land, refusing to barter with unlawful sales and transport of goods and services. I will not intentionally or unintentionally cause damage to the guild hall property or merchant's goods and agree to a deduction of payment if such damage occurs. In the case of death, I agree that the guild will disperse of any remaining balance or payments to any family, kin, or with the appropriate priests of workers preferred deity specified on record, which is what we filled out. So you just each have to sign that. You can write in your respective I do have some questions on that. <laughs> <laughs> so you said willfully damage the property. Well, our job tonight is going to be protecting the property and protecting something that get damaged. Does I, that to exclude while on the job? Um, it... To be honest, it's usually a case-by-case -case circumstance. If it was unavoidable and it was... It, just just try not to cause any damage and we'll, we'll, we'll see. But it's, don't, don't, be re don't be too reckless. Now, as far as stealing, smuggling, and whatnot, what if it's for a job for the guild? Well, we only do legal sales, so it wouldn't be stealing or smuggling. So you shouldn't have to be required to do that kind of work. Shouldn't be, I won't. You won't be asked to do that work. Okay. <laughs> Lawyered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a desk clerk. Um, do you have any, if you have any questions? No. Nope. Can you all write your names? Yeah. Hans and Franz will write, write everything. Hans okay. and Franz and name Hang as okay. the deity. Uh, Hans Sorry. and Franz and, uh... uh Moru, Moru is yours. Yeah, Moru. You could yeah. write anyone. <laughs> You could write Bob. You could write the god all. No. Would no. Rowan have ever written his name? Would he? I, that I is up to this, you. I never went to, to you. school. That is up to you. She has books and knows how to read and write, so. Yeah, I probably yeah. would have taught you. Okay. It's up to you. Yeah, I probably okay. would have taught you. It's just very you. messy. You, you probably, mark. it probably would be like, uh, like the, like a You're 10 saying, or 12 yeah. year old chicken scratch yeah. kind of stuff. Not like hey, five year old, like this, but like <laughs> you would try and you'd yeah. fumble with the pen a little bit, and then like it would be more like, like what a twelve year old would write, yeah. like yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nora will go ahead and, and sign yeah, her name seven. in cursive, yeah. like very fancy, yeah. and as her her Magic deity, she puts the green man. <laughs> okay, I forgot about that. Yeah, Ro Rowan or whatever your local force. Just chicken scratches Rowan <laughs> and draws a little tree next to it. <laughs> I'm so glad Sam did not take a drink of the lemonade as you said that. Yeah, the, 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 the tree almost looks like this Celtic knot tree on the top of my dice box. That's pretty intricate for a chicken tree. Not, not quite as, like, <laughs> okay. obviously it's not that intricate, but okay. just, like, you know. Sort he of tries. Like, it, looks, it looks like a tree and then some circles. Um. Yeah, so you all get your signatures in. Some are a little bit worse for wear, but they still count. Um, I, uh, again, I apologize. Huh? It's all right. It's all right. Some I, I ask because some people who work here can't actually read or write, so we have somebody else like read it and represent. Why them. not? Not everyone knows how to read and write. Everybody in our village does. Well, your village must be very special then. Um, now I'm going to put this away, and I'm Seems all good strange. with you. Um, here are oh. some badges. He's just kind of like ignoring you because you can kind of tell he's trying to like. <laughs> he wants to go into his not. He's like, here's some badges. Um, Mm -hmm. Here's a token showing that you work for the guild in case, like, uh, you need to prove your identity. And he hands you, like, little um, metal tokens that have a little sigil on them. Um, so this token is looks like it's made out of some sort of metal. You would guess probably iron of some sort. And it is a little circle, and it has a white scale in it. And then the top of the coin, like, the background is painted blue. And then there is a little point going up in it, like a half pyramid that is a gray band. And that is your Wait, little token. Can you show us? Yes, I'm just describing it for the audience, but this is oh. what it looks like. Oh, okay. Huh. What does it mean? Oh, this is our, our official sigil and stuff for legal documents. When we sign things, it has a seal on it like I this. I gather as much, but when my brother puts his seal on something, it means something. What does it mean? 
it means that this is property or someone who represents the Guild Hall of Feyen. Just an That's identity. what the token means. Yes. But what does the symbol... What, what's the symbology behind? I don't know. I didn't design it. Can I please go enjoy my evening, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> ben, Look, ben, I didn't make you come here. I I know, but you're making me stay here. I, look, you can go ask Ben questions. He might know. And he probably has some more details if there's any jobs for you. I walk over to him. I put my hand on his shoulder. Oh, oh uh, you're so big. Honda, you seem like a very nice young man. I apologize for taking the time. You seem very dead inside, and that saddens my heart. So here, take this and go out and have fun. I'll give him ten gold. Oh, uh, thank, thank, thank you. Why don't you go take your family out to the movies? <laughs> go buy yourself uh, some good, good nice. I suppose. Uh, thank you. I, you know. <laughs> I should I should probably buy my mother a gift with this. It's been a while since I've seen her. Thank you. I, I think I'll go do a little shopping before it gets too late. And I'll give him okay. probably a little bit too hard of a cuff on the shoulder. Oh, oh, oh. Good. Oh, no. God, you're Start strong, my sh- shoulder. Um, okay, so he, he kind of ushers you out of his little desk, his little office area, and uh, basically kind of closes up and then heads out of the guild hall. Goodbye, Ponder. Uh, good goodbye, Rowan. And he'll just he walk out. My name. Night. He did. Um, and then as you guys are kind of like mulling around, like, oh, what do we do now? Um, uh, ben, the steward shows up. You guys have met before. Real, real or- quick, Rowan is is just like fiddling with the the symbol. Okay. In his hand, just examining it and, mm-hmm. and just kind of playing with it. And fidgeting. We, fidgeting. We've encountered like scales. Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, yeah, we probably have to waste Yeah, you have to waste yeah. stuff to... Ch- well, you, also, I mean, just in you, our 12 years... So, it's like, what, you, what, you know. in, in the form of, in, like, the text of symbology, what do the scales generally mean? Mm-hmm. Is it is it, like, here, where mm-hmm. scales represent some sort of law? Yeah, it's... Rep- usually, you've seen it um, with your village where you're weighing out goods for a trade. So, like, you know, if, you're, if your tribe is bartering something with the weight of something... You put it on a scale and see how much it weighs. But in terms of symbology, though. Yeah, it's a sign of, like, um, legal transaction, uh, making sure that things weigh what they're supposed to, judging how much it weighs. It has, like, a good true... It has the same symbology, those in our culture. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, So, anything else you guys are doing before Ben walks over to you? No. No, when Ben comes, I'll already do a question for him. Okay. Ah, I see you signed the paperwork. Ponder's off for the evening. Uh, I believe Guildmaster Williams told me that you might be watching our merchandise tonight. Yes. Yeah, the wine. Yes. Yes, the wine shipment. That's scheduled to go out. It's not going to be all night, but it will be for the next handful of hours when our um, guards are off for the evening. And then until the shipment arrives at three in the morning. So it'll be a few, it'll be, he does the math in his head. We'll be like about eight hours. Of so the wine's time. coming here? No, it's it's right now. It's under. You um, just said when the shipment arrives. No, to pick it up. It's getting the shipment arrives up. to pick it up? No, no, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Lizzie. <sighs> oh boy. It's, it's currently under in our cellar right now in storehouse and it'll be transported by river. The boat big enough to take it was handling some, coming down from the mountains. So, so we're, we're waiting, waiting for, for it to come get yes. picked up. Yes. Okay. Yes. Ben, I do have a question for you. I this coin. You. Yes. <laughs> is it okay if I drill a hole in it? Well, not me per se. Probably my brother. You I mean see. stamp a hole in it? Um, yes, I would encourage you not to to face it too much to make sure that the symbols still recognize on it, but if you wanted to turn it, like, put so I know some of the members put a hole in it so they can, like, tie it around as a bracelet or a necklace. Well, I'd like to put it in with the rest of my good luck charms and whatnot in my hair. He kind of, like, looks at your hair and notices, like, all the fetishes and the, like, little beads. And he's like, oh, yes, yes, uh, yes, make, but you should be able to do that. You think you could do that? Sure. Joe. Thank you. Now I have another question. Being is probably what, just him. What does it mean? <laughs> oh, 
it's it's the symbol of our guild. It's weighing scales, weighing merchandise, making sure everything is fair and equal and balanced. What about the silver scale or the silver? Oh, the gold band. Chevron. The chevron. 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 It's like a Chevy. So I. Th- I'm pretty rock. sure when I built this thing, I think the Chevron the city? probably. Yes, I when built I built the city. the city on rock and roll. Yep. Um, no, I'm pretty sure this is Actually, me speaking above right. table. When I looked it up, I'm pretty sure it had a meaning, but I don't remember what it was. So keep that in mind if there's an official medieval <laughs> meaning out there. I'm probably going to get it wrong. Um, uh, the blue is to represent the. Uh, the river, since most of our trade goes up and down the the Dakra River, and the I believe the the gray is supposed to be representative of a um, an compass needle pointing the directions for travel. So like an arrow okay, head. balance goods, travel. direction and river. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's actually, I think, the same color. Now that you mention it, I think it's also the same colors of the god of trade. Which is... That is interesting. Mm-hmm. Who's that? So... I don't know who that is. <laughs> um, oh, yes. So this sigil is just... Like Sylvanus. Yes. Sylvanus. It's just Sylvanus. Coin, right? Sylvanus? Yes, Sylvanus. S Y. S. I L V O N U S. Sylvanus. Yes. And um, where does Sylvanus come from? Where? I'm not an existential man. You mean where do the gods come from, or where does no, he? No, no. Um, was Sylvanus a local god, or maybe someone from down south or east? I mean, he's been local since I've lived in the city. Uh, he has one of the temples in the Sun's Way district. And he's the god of trade, oaths, merchants, travel, sort of, you know, protect goods and services traveling. Sounds like a Hallmark god. Yes. <laughs> he is very much a Hallmark <laughs> god. He has a Christmas special every <laughs> Now, when you come down to Sylvanus' uh, uh, merchant barn, we're going to sell you all the things you need. <laughs> Marked up by a percentage or two. <laughs> Got to make sure that you get that money for the, for the temple. <laughs> and remember, kids, get that paper. <laughs> um, did you have any more questions about the gods? or? Plenty, but they can wait. Oh, well, I would also see. It seems no one actually knows anything. No, brother. Um, well, did you need to do any uh, preparations before your shift starts watching the merchandise? I could do some calisthenics before we have that big dinner. Are, yes. Uh, it's, the, the, the shift gets off in about two hours, so you can just take a bit of time. You can explore around here yeah, if you want, do some calisthenics. You have, a, you have a big room, possibly with some weights. Um, yes, or at least we do. heavy objects. Yes. Uh, Maybe some training gear. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. So um, he will show you all if you want to see to the um, the kind of there's like a little area where um, it's kind of next to the stables. It looks like sleeping quarters, like it's in part of the building. Um, there are sleeping quarters on one side. It looks like there's some private guards that live there and work here in the guild hall. And then it has like big, uh, like a big kind of training facility where there's sure. weights there's stuff to do pull-ups on there's a little it's not really a track you get the sense that most people like who want to actually go running like you just go outside and run around is there, is there a wagon wheel laying on its side in the middle of the room it's just like flip off the yes <laughs> yes yes <laughs> there is gym. Yep. It's probably more like a log there's a bunch, yeah. of, a bunch of like like Eight inch tall blocks you can stack to jump up onto. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Yep. There's lots of random stuff like that you can tell for people doing workouts. Um, is that? Are you guys gonna go work out too? Or Nora's gonna go over and try to lift one of the weights. Doesn't get anywhere with it. <laughs> just backs up and goes, no. Nope. <laughs> uh, Ro- Rowan will follow everyone in, but he's gonna um, just sort of survey the the room, and then he'll go find a, a corner or a 
um, some wall to sit near. And he, he sits down and he, he's still fiddling with the coin and sort of examining his his body and figuring out where to put it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure most people uh, do at your age. There's a prison wallet. <laughs> that is... <laughs> no, he's got a chest he, cavity. He, does... he, he, op- he opens his chest cavity. Hold on. <laughs> and places it inside and looks at it and then takes it back out and closes it. And he's just he just keeps like Fiddling. Like holding Fiddling. it up to his chest and like trying to figure out where to oh, put it. Oh, if only I had pockets. <laughs> <laughs> so when when Nora goes and tries yeah. to pick up a weight, it's like, nope. Hans <laughs> uh, and Franz is going to grab like basically the, the 15 pound The baby weight? <laughs> like the, the broom no, no. handle? Yeah, it's basically what they would do a bench press on. That, that It just has weight in itself. <laughs> okay. like 15 pounds, 20 pounds, mm-hmm. something like that. At the gym would be like 45. Yeah. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. I find something that like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. I'll just, just try this. She'll, you have to get the form down first. Oh, okay. But to show you, <laughs> <laughs> steak and eggs and eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it takes for breakfast. <laughs> Nora does exactly what you do. <laughs> Can you do it in the voice, Ooh. please? Uh, steak and eggs. <laughs> yes, yes, the form is, is good. Just keep at it. Okay. And she'll just, she'll keep going, and eventually she's like, I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. <laughs> it takes all of repetition. Yes, repetition. it's not, you won't get it in one try. You come back day after day after day, and then it's you look really like this. It's really intimidating. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Hans and Franz are flexing right now. <laughs> it's it's pretty hot. Big flex. Uh, Big flex. Much, much she's flex. just, she's going to keep going for at least about 20 minutes. Oh, oh okay. wow. So, yeah, so, she's, so, she's Nora's, she's trying her well, see, best. You're doing, Nora's doing, participating, gonna... so it'd be, it'd be a set of that, of, yep. of steak and eggs. Yeah, like, she's going to do whatever they yeah. tell her to do for about 20 minutes, <laughs> and then after a minute, she, she, she looks over and sees Rowan, just still <laughs> fiddling, probably. For 20 minutes. Yep. Trying <laughs> to figure out which tiny <laughs> little twig branch he can stick that. Thank you guys for your help, though. This was this was nice, but I want to make sure. We will be uh, in okay. the morning again if you want to come down. Okay, I'll think about it. Good. And she's gonna and go Hans over there. are there for another hour and a half. Guys, <laughs> 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 okay. probably, probably for like forty-five minutes, at least for Hans and uh-huh. Franz. Right. And then he'll go for a run. And come back. Okay. Oh sure. You guys, little, uh, quick dip in the river. It's, and come back. yeah. I was like, it's oh, pretty yeah. hot out right now. It's about the equivalent of August, and it is more temperate here, but it's still like in the mid 70s so after you guys are doing all the working out you're pretty you're pretty gross and sweaty so yeah, yeah washing off in the river would be yeah. good you get a Excellent. leech on your leg as you come out <laughs> oh that's yeah. what i was doing because <laughs> <laughs> like, like i was like oh you, you did too <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna eat the i'm eggs. gonna go over to rowan and and just kind of peel over <laughs> um it's a bit coppery wrong? I'm I'm trying to figure out where where to put this sigil. Where to put it? I don't know if I should um display it on my on my body or um put it into my chest cavity. Um I just don't what am I supposed well, to do with it? Here. Let me let me have it for a minute. Okay, and he hands okay. it to her. Um and I'm gonna I'm gonna are they? Are you guys back inside? No, yet? they're still. No, no. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna hand it. Well, well we probably still. We probably were still working out yeah. when okay. you went over yeah, to see yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. they're still work. They're on bacon and eggs now. Whatever that <laughs> workout is. You don't whatever do bacon and eggs after steak and eggs. <laughs> I don't know. That's Let's... the all day after. <laughs> She'll just walk up to where they're working out and wait patiently and just like stand there. <laughs> oh yeah. Until they notice that she's there. Certainly, yeah. certainly okay. notice. Okay. Um. So Rowan needs to figure out what to do with this. Um, I was thinking, would you, if if you're gonna be doing the, what'd you call it, the stamping of holes? Yeah, yeah. punching. Yeah, yeah, I'd punch. Pun- punching. Yeah. Okay, Um, if you wouldn't mind actually doing that to his too. No, Rowan, not actually punching. It's a, oh. oh. You use a metal I'll, device. Yeah, I'll show you. Oh, 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 so it's it's like when I when I carve things into my arms. I no no oh, <laughs> not quite. I'll show you. Oh, okay. 
Oh Jesus! <laughs> I think so, brother. We need to have a talk about. It. We need to use the trees. He realizes that there's a blank spot, uh, sort of on, oh, on like the side, tree? the side of his arm. Mm-hmm. So, so he takes out his wood carving tools and he just starts carving some some Celtic symbols sure. into his his arm. Actually, Rowan, if you're gonna do that, you could probably carve out a nice little hovel. A circle, I mean. Not a hole, don't go. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> but like a circle that's the right size for the pendant and you could just put it in there. Like in my chest? Yeah. Yeah, like a badge. Oh, you you know, the city watch. Well, no, but then if we don't want to be associated for some reason, reason. Not as well. Not as well. Not as well. My tongue is the whole time. My tongue is swelling for some reason. I don't know what to do. Oh god, I had the lobster <laughs> tail. <laughs> Look here, Pam. <laughs> You're allergic to lobster. But if we don't want to be associated for some reason, having it displayed in chest probably not a good idea. I mean, you could take it out. Well, then it could fall out anyway. So you won't want to do that. Yeah, okay. Um, and also, you do with, know this. I've seen you, have you, to I've seen you make things with your druid abilities. Maybe if... My brother punches and holds it. You can make a bracelet for him. Some sort of necklace, maybe. Yeah, I was hoping for a medallion. Sure, easy, yeah. Um, I was gonna say, you know this, Aaron. Like your wood always is kind of regrowing of it over time, so mm-hmm. it's very Put much like in. skin. <laughs> so like it would eventually kind of like either grow over or would start filling in the hole again. So that's why, like all your Celtic symbols, you have to recarve so them over time. So if I stab him and we leave it there, it eventually become part of him. Yeah, it'll grow up around him. Like, out of the tree. Mm-hmm. Like, like the, uh, like, uh, Calama- Calamari? Calamari? Ca- the Calamari, the, the, the ball. Yeah. yeah. The what? He's, it was a game for <laughs> Oh, I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. It was an amazingly stupid, amazing game. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm essentially a tree, but I regrow a bit faster than a normal tree would. Um, mm-hmm. I don't like. Yeah, he doesn't. Ma- do it takes to, like, a while. Hair? Like, 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 it's just like branches come out. Yeah, so it, it it looks it looks like a miniature tree the way he has it currently. Do you, you have a see, bonsai on your head? Yes, uh, you can see what looks like roots kind of hugging his the crown of his head, um, and he's he's taken some some twine and tied the the, the separate branches, branches into a, like a knot. It's a man bun. And there's, there's a tree like bun. A little plume of, of leaves. Okay. On on top that sort of come down a little bit of a like a, a, ponytail. a ponytail type. Nice. Type hanging leaf structure. That is what Nora is. You might say he's got a dirty mind. Because the tree growing tree. up there, just the soil kind of. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> was <laughs> a stretch. <laughs> Um, Look, Justin, like a title of your life. No, <laughs> it was good. It was good. It was. I good. tried. You tried. Um, so okay. So basically, you are working out for the rest of the time yep. and showering off in the river. Showering. Uh, washing mm-hmm. off in the river. Bathing. Bathing. Yeah. A few other random people. Looks like they're kind of rinsing off. Really. The river's cold though, because it moves pretty fast. Uh, and it's big. Hans and Franz gets completely naked. Yeah. Well, so does everyone else who's washing in the I, river. Yeah. yeah. The poor people don't care. They just, oh, that's they just good. go. The peasants. The peasants don't and, care. And so we probably have like 20 minutes at least before like yeah. everyone yeah. Ever getting ready right, to bathe. Right. Uh, he just go over and start talking to people. Okay. <laughs> like we don't have to do anything. Just probably like probably uncomfortable for them because I'm like really naked. And well, I'm they're also really naked. Yeah. And I get close to that. Like not like close, close, but like probably yeah. closer than a naked man should be. Yeah, is, <laughs> is there anything closer in particular than a naked man like should be to anybody? <laughs> give me. Give me a charisma check. <laughs> right. First roll with the new dice. Ooh, not bad. All right. Uh, just straight charisma. Yeah. Fourteen. Pretty good. Um. Yeah. They don't. They don't seem too scared of you. There, there's people chatting with you and friendly. And so if you have questions or whatever, you could ask them. But otherwise, like, yeah, they're they engage with talking just, to you. They're yeah, just, yeah, just chit chat. Yeah. yeah. Saying hi. Yeah. Like, Letting them know if they're if they're attractive, like. A very good looking person. It's not you should know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a man, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. No. Um, yeah, yeah, that's beautiful, too. <laughs> yes, they are. Be beautiful, too. Yeah, I know, like, right? Like us. Have you seen any of the Chris's? Well, oh. oh. Men can be beautiful, too. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, no, they're, it goes pretty well. They're pretty friendly and, like, you know, chat back, joke around, have a good time. 
You, you formed some, like, you know, acquaintances there and stuff. Okay. Cool. Hello, new friends. You might get elves. Goodbye, friends. It's good to be with you. Oh, bye, how's your friends? See you around. <laughs> Not even get dressed, just take my clothes and... <laughs> <laughs> We have to air dry. Yeah. Oh my god. But Are you course, walking up to the guild hall? No, 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 no. Okay. It's just, you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes. No. 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 <laughs> just got to air dry for a bit. Then we can put the... Clothes on, okay. Clo- our clothes on. <laughs> Andrew wants to do this mission naked, all right. I mean... That's, the, that's anyway. the traditional Celtic way of fighting, Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, Distract your enemies with nudity. Yep. yep. I mean, that would be pretty distracting. <laughs> I mean. Um, cool, cool, cool. Um, so you guys go back in, and uh, Ben shows you down. Um, there's some stairs off of the main um, entryway, like where you guys ate breakfast and stuff in the morning. The big words are failing me. <laughs> the big open like eating hall. hall yeah the dining hall uh you go down some stairs a little bit and you can feel it get colder and stuff you're <laughs> definitely going under the ground and it's kind of smells a little mildewy and the steps are a little co- or stone and there's torches around though so you can see and you guys make your way down the stairs and then there's a big open room like a cellar it's stone it's pretty tall and there's Rooms going like this way, and then there's also a room going a little like little alcoves going that way. And you can see there's a bunch of crates and stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, going going what way and what way? Sorry, for for, for the for mic, our, yeah. for our um, listeners. I could pull my map out. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there is a big room here, um, several feet long. Say <laughs> one, two, <laughs> ninety-five feet. Long and hundreds of feet. <laughs> sixty feet across. Yeah, sixty feet across, and there's a bunch of crates and stuff in here. And then there's an alcove on the north yeah, and south an side. Al- yep, yeah, there's an alcove on the north and south yeah. side. I think it's north and south. I had it right here. Yeah, north and south north side. And south. <laughs> um, <I'm> trying. <laughs> trying. Um, and there's yeah, just boxes and crates and stuff in the far. N- Southern end of the room you see looks like there's some more stairs that kind of go out and there is a big barred locked door there with multiple bolts oh, through thought, it. I thought you meant B-A-R-D, like a big barred. I'm no, like, a what? big bar. <laughs> there's a big yeah. bar. That's at that on the yeah, on the south west side. side there. Yes. North, on the west, north, yes. West. On the west side. Um and you guys kind of go in, there's some torches and stuff lit, and it's flickering a bit. It's Kind of damp and mildewy and a little Does wet down walk here. Us on your yeah, Ben Ben going? shows oh. you where the stuff is, and he basically says, "Right, all right. So the only two entrances are the stairs you just came down, and then the ones across the room on the west, and those are locked and barred. So where do those go? Uh, those go out towards the actual river where we load it on the boats. So we have to have that there. Um, it's most like the Thieves Guild should only really be able to get in either one of these entrances if they're going to make a heist for this. We don't know if they are, but this is Fey wine. It is rather expensive, so I'm sure somebody would pay for it without the taxes on it. So Rowan sort of um, looks over the room and tries to figure out the most tactical location for him to sort of set up shop. Okay. Um... Do you want me to roll for that, or can I, can, um, can Aaron make the decision of? I'll let you make the go? decision. Okay, so he he kind of goes along the uh, south <laughs> wall near the corner of the alcove or north wall, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Um. Uh. Position in a place where he can see both entrances. Sure, <laughs> and he'll he'll sort of um. He'll sort of sit down with his his knees at his chest yeah um and and look around and, and just kind of think for a little while like a battle droid from star wars prequels yeah i'm thinking like bastion from Roger, Roger. Roger. Yep. Kind of yep. i'm in turret mode, yep. <laughs> yep, mode. um nora will go ahead into that corner over there here yep uh, what are the walls made of in here uh they are stone okay. like cut stone or like they're cut stone, stone like, as they're... like like a foundation of just river Found... stones 
foundation of no no they're cut stones like this was specifically built under okay. here with intention well, yeah I mean, like it was it's cut stone like so it's like masonry. so like, so, masonry, like, like yeah. so this was cut out of stone and laid here yes yes not <laughs> made with like stones and then like some sort of mortar and cement no it's the first one <laughs> like there's like there's not really like much like space between the rocks or anything just over the passage of time probably oh, that's like it. a few like, yeah. Well, that's there, it. yeah where are you going <laughs> i'll just go go around <laughs> i'll make laps probably like stick on the southern wall here and then probably only go about halfway up to the north side and back over the road <clears throat> So we're just, we'll do uh, an alt, uh, uh, just a circling patrol. Oh, if you, I thought you were posting up over there. But yeah. No, if, you, if you're on patrol, I'd be on patrol. Citizens I'm basically on patrol. staying and watching. So, and Ben's okay. still down there with us, right? Um, yeah, just for the initial like first couple minutes or so. Yep. Now, do you have any questions? Basically, if you see thieves, kill them or... What is the passphrase for those who are not thieves? Passphrase. Yeah. Well, somebody comes oh, down oh, here, tell. and I don't want to stab them because they're with the guild. What would they say to me? Um, if they say, "Don't stab them in the guild," I'm probably going to stab them because <laughs> that's what the thief would say. Um. If I say flash, just, they say thunder. Well, if it's the only person who should be coming down here is maybe one of the servants, and they all wear the gray outfit. And it's all good, a thief. Yes. It's terrible security. <laughs> well, that's why we have. You hired. Um, no one should come down here until the order is right. I mean, no one should come down here, and no one will come down here. No one will come down here until the the shipment. If anybody comes down here before the shipment comes at what time in the morning? Four, just before dawn. And what is their name? What do they look like? <laughs> and what do they do? Ah, <laughs> uh, my. Got him. Uh, the captain on this boat is named. Elric, he is a human, a very old, surly man with a gray beard. But I will, I will come down at four a.m. and and see the shipment off. So. So now you're coming down. At four when they arrive. Okay, so but if no, if anybody else comes down before you do, we kill them. <laughs> oh. Take them into you custody. can you could take them into custody because we if you get a prisoner you can always we can always turn them over to the guards and they can be interrogated. And yes, they were the thieves guild and asked them some questions. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So but sounds good. Anybody else is fair game to at least beat the shit out of them. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Ro- Rowan raises his hand. Yes. For ben. Yes. So. We are we are just to sit here and watch. Yes. And wait. Yes. If anyone okay comes in, tries to steal the the cargo, then you are to intercept them and prevent them from stealing it. S- specifically, just this stuff in the middle here, right? Um, the all the barrels around the edges as oh, well. Oh, all all of the things. Yes, all of the things. Okay. Okay. And he he sort of like settles in. Okay. And. Um, yeah, so Rowan, uh, sort of extra settles in. He, he gets out of his sort of knees to his chest position, goes a little bit cross-legged and his eyes normally, um, have a little bit of a glow to them. Yes. You see them sort of dim a little bit and he just sits there. Hey, Rowan. You know, if your legs are like that, it's going to be very hard for you to stand up. Okay, his, his, his eyes grow a bit brighter, and he looks in your mm-hmm. direction, Hans and Franz, and he, he says, I understand, but if we're going to be here for a long period of time, I figure we should probably get some rest. No, there is no rest. We're on the job. Uh... Uh, he looks to Nora. Do, do they not? Um, how does how how does sleep work for um, their people? Flesh bags. The, the same as me, but um, unfortunately tonight's gonna have to be one of those nights where we just don't sleep that much until oh. later. 
Okay. So you don't well, have to go to sleep yet unless you need to. I can always try to wake you up, but it's probably good that you stay pretty alert. Well, I mean, while I'm sleeping, I, I am always alert. I never I never truly lose consciousness. Oh, I know. Like it's just, most people. Just make sure that you're, you're watching out for things, okay? Oh, I always am. Okay. It's okay. I can always see and hear things. Okay, good. Okay. No, we don't need to sleep. It's okay. Oh, okay. So he sort of stands back up and, like, just looks around. Just Super awkward. Engaged. Engaged. <laughs> I'm imagining just scanning the room. Well, that, that's, 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 that's the funny thing. Like, his, his he doesn't require sleep, but he goes into a sentry mode. Oh, no. I, yeah. I've played, I played a war version yeah. in Dan's game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So See, I, I understand. But yeah. Hans and Franz doesn't understand. Right, right. It's like, Everything why are you shutting down? <laughs> Tree, <laughs> wake up. Tree, wake up. Is <laughs> everything okay? So far, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you guys are down here for... Oh, yeah, definitely. A while. <laughs> like, it's kind of hard to gauge this because of the cool. time. Oh, yeah. Without, like, the light, you know, you're underground and the torch light. But you can kind of tell by how, like, the torches have been burning down. It's been several hours. Like, you probably guess it's been about, like, four hours or so. You're about halfway through your shift and nothing's happened yet. It's getting, you're getting tired. It's probably, what like... What are the little, like, boxes on my... Your side? My side. Um, you can see that they're crates and they look like they're full of bottles. Okay. Are they like closed crates? Yes. Like fully closed. They're they're closed. There's a little bit of like a peak hole in the side though that like for like kind of the hands and mm. stuff. And yeah. It looks like they have for lifting. Gla- yeah, for lifting. Okay. There's glass. There looks like there's glass bottles in okay. there. So yeah, every every probably lap or so. Mm-hmm. Um, are you guys on? Are you guys on just like a walking pace? Yeah, mm-hmm. we're just on a walking pace around the the room. Um, uh, you know, just keeping an eye out, um, probably moving slower uh, mm-hmm. past the uh, the entrances mm-hmm. to kind of, you know, listen more carefully for anything approaching. Um, um, but at the dock one, um, uh, Josh's Hans and Franz would, um, you know, uh, just kind of actually stop and listen. Give me a perception check. Oh, that was so. It would have been that took so good. Pass. Uh, seven or my passive of fourteen. All right, you think you can kind of hear the faint, faint running of water in the distance, which you would assume would be the river sure, yeah. going by, and just occasionally, like you know, the random like sounds of the night with the wind, but you don't really hear anything else. And so the these doors are bolted. Bolt. Are they, like, they're bolted bars? on. Yeah, they're barred on your side. Okay. Stop at about the four hour mark. Have some dry tack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rowan. I'm hungry. Yeah. Rowan yeah. turns to Nora and asks, "How are you doing?" I'm doing okay. I'm just kind of keeping an eye out, thinking about stuff. Just, just, just waiting. Okay. Um, and as we're kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. monotony kind of sets in a bit, probably once in a while. And like, Hans and Franz will try and stay, um, very on task. Mm-hmm. Later once in a while, you know, just kind of zone a bit. Mm-hmm. And like, as he walks by, he probably like asks them questions, you know, like, uh, you had mentioned something about, uh, your parents earlier. Yeah. Um, who's your dad? Who <laughs> you do? No. Um, <laughs> yeah, just ask, you know, like, uh. Do I recognize when they said they're from the what forest? White the Cater Forest. The Cater Forest. The Cater forest. That's okay. the forest you got. You know that is the massive forest that is all around the Pale Mountain Ridge, from right to like the um. So the north side. Yeah, the west. Well, the west part of the city you were in now, up around the tip of the Pale Mountains, is called the Cater so came Forest. Right through there. Yeah, you did, and that's where you were chasing around looking for the. The kid as well. You went through well, a small part. part of the that's part of the Cater Forest. Oh, but the Cater wow. Forest is like hundred, Man. actually hundreds of miles. It's like the, um, it's kind of like the primeval forest in Poland, which is massive and like hundreds of feet 
Okay. So is there anything that I Hundreds can relate to? Um, yeah. Hundreds uh, of feet. Literally hundreds of feet. Uh, not hundreds of feet. Uh, Thousands. It's, it's like, hun- it's hundred several hundred miles, miles long. And miles. Okay. And wide. And goes into the mountain range. I just want you to know that I have no idea what Poland Force you're talking about. Okay. I was hoping for something a little more relatable. Um. The American side. <laughs> Or like I'm trying to think of mass. Well, like the, the well, like distance, like from like Fargo oh. to Bismarck. Yeah, then... probably probably from more Fargo to Fargo to Bis- Minneapolis. Yeah, Minneapolis. Like from it takes. Fargo to Bismarck's 190 miles. Yeah, it's it's you would know depending on which way you're going. <laughs> like it could take anywhere between like if you're going across one way just into the mountains, it would probably be like four days travel, but if you were going like up all the way around and hugging the mountains, it could be like two to three weeks of travel. Okay. So, okay. so it's not terribly wide. Right. Just no, because it's because of the miles. Because of the miles. Yeah. And what was the, what was the name of the large village? Uh, white, white tree. tree. White tree. Do we oh, wait, are you adding that, that in? Village? Okay. Uh, you didn't. Mm, so we passed through some villages up in the north. Yeah, you actually probably did pass through. You probably did pass through white tree because like where you guys picked up the job was near the mountains and that is kind of nestled in the mountains in the forest so that you guys probably would have been in that area when okay. I mean, you pass through um but i mean just just for sake of whatever you know hans and franz would just ask you know like oh you mentioned your parents you know, what do they do mm-hmm. how long have you guys lived there mm-hmm. uh, what do you want to know about death <laughs> <laughs> yeah what do you want to know oh, about yeah. the gods um so in fact i would offer you a book that was just to give me the title for. I'll pull it up in a second. Do you guys really want to know? Because <laughs> I can tell you. Oh, we can do it later. Okay. Liz wants to do something, but I don't know. No, keep talking. Role play, role play, role play. Keep yeah. talking. It's fine. Um, I'm sad Megan's well, not here. She's missing out on all this role yeah. playing <laughs> stuff. You guys are supposed to know each other's characters. Well, well, my dad's name is Callum. <laughs> He's a a, a wood carver, a lumberjack, carpenter, lumberjack. We call him Papa. Yep. Um, in our village. And uh, he met my mom. We call her Mama. Yep. And um, and it's just me and Rowan. And um, we, we, we were having some family. Like, you know, finances are hard. The um, forest isn't really doing that great right now so we are out and about just trying to kind of help our family out get some money for them things like that it's very honorable of you so um did anyone die or why are you curious about you know what happens after death well there's there's somebody in particular that i would like to just talk to and know that they're okay oh you want to speak with the dead person maybe someday So, we don't have to talk about that right now. So we should probably cut this. He's Norman, your brother. Give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, twenty. Twenty. You're kind of like avoiding eye contact, talking to them, trying to change the subject, and from like this corner of the room, you kind of see something like black and like dark on the floor, and the flickering torchlight because it's low light in here. It's a little tricky to see. Um, guys, what's that over there? What did Nora see in the shadows? Are the Venerable going to attempt a break-in? Find out on our next episode of The Guardians of Fahal.